What's up, Bradley Aiden Johnson here, and I wanted to do a video um, basically just going into what I have learned from my time training people and myself, and things that I've had to kind of accept that I have allowed to be part of the novice program that I've been working on for a very long time um, the Bad Method Novice Training Program, and two key elements of, of, of the, the program that I came up with, what I found to be absolutely necessary for any training program is a mix of rigidity with flexibility and I personally my nature my way because I came up in sport um, training very rigidly very inflexibly and my nature is just to I'm the kind of guy that if you that used to would read the instruction booklet cover to cover when I bought a new game. If I get an IKEA piece of thing, I make sure I've got every single piece and follow step one to step two. I love following instructions. It's my nature to be incredibly rigid. When I put people on training programs, I follow them exactly to the letter. I don't allow for any deviation from it. That's my nature. And I always have pushed for that with people that I train. Um, to the point of, and I will definitely admit it, to the point of, their detriment because you know every any person that's a coach knows that their emotion gets into it and they make decisions for their trainees that aren't 100 percent the best thing for them and do they do it to themselves in their own training every person knows this the, the point of being a coach and being a good coach is limiting that as much as you possibly can so that they the net the net benefit is as big as possible obviously um <laughs> i'd like to think people i train get a net benefit from having trained with me um but the point i really wanted to get into was that the other side of that which is walking to the gym and basically doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Hey man, I haven't listened to Hodge in a long time. You can go to the gym, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Anyway, um, when you go into the gym to do whatever you want to do is, that might be for, for some people great and they might like it and whatever, but it, there are massive drawbacks of just doing whatever you want to do in that you will generally go towards muscles that are show muscles, um, you will generally avoid problem areas, your programming will always be sub standard sub um optimal sorry substandard sub optimal because you're training what you emotionally would desire to do over what you physically would be required to do and so then you can look at the rigid training which is the way i've always looked at it it's got to be rigid because that's what training is it's supposed to be hard it's supposed to be like that and you've got to do it that way in order to make progress which is physiologically true however we are not physiological beings entirely we're also emotional ones and it's not just about what is best and most optimal for someone with their training, it's what makes them most enthused about doing so, which leads to the greatest performance. As, as a kid that grew up and was forced to play tennis, I always hate, I talk about tennis all the time, and I talk about it in a positive light, but actually as a kid when I was playing, I hated it. And I really, really, really hated it because it was so inflexible, It was I was like, you must play tennis, you have to play, you have to train six days a week, you have to do this, after school we're here, we're doing it. And it just made me hate it. And ultimately, since as I'm sitting right here and I'm not a tennis player, do it. it didn't work out because I drifted away from it and as soon as I got the opportunity I was old enough to say I don't want to do this I, I did because I was forced too strictly to do it it was my training was too rigid I, there wasn't an allowance for me to grow to love it or to have deviance within what I was doing so what I've learned from training people is the importance within any training protocol programming for there to be flexibility whilst rigidity in order to make it work and the way in which i've done that in the the novice training program that i've come up with is i've forced single sets at lowish uh, low comparative rpe scales um numbers um, of squat bench and deadlift what that does is that builds 90 to 95 percent of the musculature of your body by squatting benching and deadlifting you're that you're basically cooked from that one set is doable by by anyone just one set is not too scary a uh, low rpe it's not too tax it's not too taxing on the central nervous system it's not too stressful it's something that i expect that if i set into the programmers for someone they'll actually in fact do it um and it's very important that people that other would go to the gym and otherwise not squat bench and deadlift well for most people bench but not squat and more predominantly not deadlift they are in fact doing them even if they're not doing them to the to the amount the quantity that someone else might be doing that you might even claim is more beneficial if they're doing that much which i would argue with i don't think that's actually true but they're doing them and they're packing on size and strength and skill from doing the most basic um biggest mass build of best lifts but then after that i'm allowing for flexibility and saying and being specifically non-specific by saying after that actually do whatever you want 
um, wherever you think you have a problem in your body and your frame, right? Do as long as it doesn't interrupt with the main areas of your training, which is the squat, the bench, and the deadlift, um, like powerlifting protocols. You can do whatever you want. If you want to do some calf raises, do some calf raises. Have fun with some calf raises. If you feel your calves are lagging, you want to, you feel like you want to do some ab work, do some ab work. If you feel like you want to do some sports specific stuff, or you feel like you need enhanced mobility. Every person is different in the sense of up here they are different. In here they're all the same. See, when people say, "Oh, it's what's best, it works for you," that's actually bullshit. That's not true. What works for you is what works for everyone. We're all the same. But our training programming should be the same, which is why I start every session and say, "You should squat, then you should bench, then you should deadlift." Right? That will pack on all the size that will make you adapt best and fastest however after that you're different up here and you're not going to want to do what someone else may want to do so if i predetermine that you should do some sprints at a certain pace with a certain resistance or i predetermine that you should do some hammer curls or something you might not want to do hammer curls as a girl you might not want to do bicep curls you might want to work on some glute work because girls like the idea of doing glute work and it's not even entirely about what your weak areas are and what will lead to the best hypertrophy um adaptations it's because most of the adaptation is going to come from the work that you've already done it, the adaptations are already there what the adding of that allows you to do and it's semi a placebo but it's not entirely because there will still be adaptations is it's just letting you have some fun in the gym and it's important to have some fun in the gym it's important you come away from every training session feeling like you did what you wanted to do a little bit and it's important that in every training session you're actually being made to be more disciplined by being forced to do what you have to do that mixture is important it's kind of that all work and no play makes jack you know a dull boy in the same way as all play and no work makes jack a fucking useless idiot right so you've got to allow for that mix um, and i found the best way to to allow for that mix is add what i to call jokers into the training programming and that is just you can do whatever you want here yeah you can do whatever you want here with in with some guidelines that mean people aren't coming off the bench press and then doing um some chest press machine work before doing some cable flyers or something. Don't, don't, that's poor programming. That's, it's eating into recovery and roads making uh, without no real benefit and increasing the chance of injury. I'm talking about, okay, we've hit the main areas of this thing now. Now you're gonna want some other things to supplement what you've done. Nobody should come away from a session of bench and feel like they didn't hit their chest enough. That's, that's, that's as the person that sets the programming, I'm there to say, actually, no, that's, that's, that's bad programming to do more chest stuff. You, you've done that, you're good. But in the same way, I'm allowing you to be wider with the things that you choose so that you can have some fun in the gym. I hope that's been some help. I'm going to cut the video short because I just heard a knock on the door. That's a trainee. Peace.